Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. Uh, Stephen, we had your uh, brother Craig on earlier. <laughs> no, you're not related to Craig, but coincidentally, and even got past me, I didn't realise we had two Keatings on today. We're talking about football on the uh, club level and some good stories in amongst some work still to be done in other spaces. Uh, umpiring this year, it's, a, it's always a constant uh, hard work to, to attract people to the craft, but I must say from watching games very closely this year, which you're forced to do when you're actually commentating on them, I've, I've got to say there's been a really positive aspect on what you guys are doing with the difficulty of people of high ages umpiring with kids, but you've done a really, really good job so far, I reckon. Oh, th- thanks, Rob. We appreciate it. You don't get too many accolades in this caper, so uh, we'll take it uh, when they come. Well, I, I've got to point out too for our listeners, uh, one particular game, the first one I did for the year was Carayo versus the Belmont Lions, round one. You umpired yourself that game, and I would be fair to suggest that you're on the wrong side of 55 years of age, and you umpired it with two teenagers, which was an odd mix, but for a coaching perspective, it was a perfect blend because there were times when you needed to come in and use your experience to settle a situation where the young fellows sort of blew the whistle and then thought, oh my goodness, what did I blow that for? Uh, but I reckon the three umpires and all the players clearly showed that um, that their understanding of the circumstance that you're working. That was one of the highlights for, for the year for me, the way that game was umpired and the way the players responded. Yeah, thank you. Oh, we, we had uh, Will, Will Tate in his first game, so... Um I just wanted to make sure he was looked after and, and uh, it was a Sunday game, which was perfect for us. So the more Sunday and night games we get, the more we can sort of spread ourselves around and, uh, in my opinion, uh, get a better result for football. Um, so um, but anyway, it's a messy save for Elbarwin. If we can have more of those games, that'd be terrific. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and w- Will's first game, Will did pretty well, but... Um, most kids in their first game, you'll find they'll have a lot of ball ups and won't pay many free kicks. So, um, so it's just out there to really encourage him and um, and uh, just make sure he's trying to get to the right places and and virtually fast track his career. And that's what we do occasionally. If we think someone's a good decision maker, we will try and fast track them into senior footy so that um, it's the best place to learn. Uh, and sometimes the GD is the best place to learn to umpire because uh, sometimes it can be a pretty tough environment that you've got to manage and uh, you know, manage 36 guys um, at that level. It's, uh, it's a pretty good breeding ground for umpiring, in my opinion. G'day, Steve. It's Neil. And uh, just I, I remember seeing a game four or five years ago down where my daughter lives in South Gippsland, and there was a kid boundary umpiring, and I reckon she would have been 11 or 12, and it was quite funny watching her try and get the ball high enough for the ruckman to not have to hit it out of their stomach. But she, she appeared to be listening to music while she was doing it, and I thought to myself, that's ridiculous. She had a mobile phone in her pocket, and she had her headset in. But in fact, she had a, 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 an umpire sitting in his car, because it's a cold day, but he was on the phone to her throughout the game. Is there an opportunity to interact with the kids apart from having to get out and run around with them, is there an opportunity to interact with them and say, you you should be 10 metres close to the ball or something like that? Not necessarily by phone, but with other sorts of technology? Yeah, we do. We we have uh, have about three kits, uh, communication kits. Uh, They're a bit tricky at times, but um, uh, we can use them to... uh, Often we'll we'll use them uh, to to the three field umpires to actually uh, be able to talk to each other and um, and back each other up. And um, if they're short of a... I mean, the traps for us are marking contests on around about the 50 metre mark, um, and if the mid zone umpire is uh, struggling a bit for position and a good view, he might ask the end zone umpire, "Hey, uh, help me out here. Um, I'm just a bit out of position." So we, we use it for those things, and we also use it for coaching, coaching juniors. Yeah, I particularly used it in a pre-season practice match uh, with a couple of uh, a 14 to 15 year old who are now doing senior football. 
and it's a terrific device so that you know it's immediate feedback which uh, which we love which is really important I would have thought there's nothing worse than at half time going into the rooms and saying now at the seven minute mark remember that that ball that went into the forward line and you could have paid a free kick the kid's got no idea whereas you could you could actually be doing it at in real time I just think that's a fantastic way to approach it yeah you're spot on it's, it's funny you do you get you go in post match or half time you'll you'll talk about a free kick and some umpires will look at you with glassy eyed and, and no absolute no recollection of it whatsoever mm. uh, so then the conversation is virtually pointless uh, until you can bring it up on the vision during the week and all the games are videoed and um, which is absolute uh, gold for us you know, I mean, from a coaching perspective so yeah, another, another thing around uh, young people, I've got a young friend who lives in regional Victoria and wants to go and get a job. You know, he's 14, 15, wants to go and get a job. And, of course, uh, f- cricket umpire... Uh, sorry, what, what game are we talking about? Footy umpiring's an ideal because it's a bit of pocket money. You earn more doing that, I suspect, than going and flipping burgers and so on. But the one reason he's saying no is because in a town where he lives, he goes to school with kids who play footy. And on Monday, he'll be bullied. How do you address things like that with kids who want to be part of it but are just apprehensive, not so much because of the actual going on, what's going on in the game, but during the week at school and stuff like that? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, I believe that it comes down to environments and um, um, you know, I mean, match day environments on the day, obviously, and then school environments. Um, it, it's, it's unfortunate that kids think that way. Um, or conversely, kids can think, uh, no, I'm going to be courageous. I've got to make decisions. Uh, these people need to understand that um, it's just a game of football and I'm out there doing my best. Uh, I know people say umpires make mistakes. I always say umpires just make decisions. Most of them are correct. Some of them are incorrect and some of them are unwarranted. So we're not, we're not out there to make mistakes. We do our best. Um, and in a town like that, you know, I mean, there's some horror stories of, of umpires living in towns and... Oh, and there's, there's some horrible stories in Outback Australia where um, uh, Aboriginal guy umpires will refuse to do a grand final because of the repercussions for a, a particular um, um, a particular tribe or whatever were to uh, were to lose the grand final. And there's some there's, there are some terrible stories out there. Yeah, because I would have thought it's an ideal. If you're a kid who, just out of interest, uh, with, if you're allowed to say it on the air, um, if I was a, a field umpire. 15 year old field umpire doing say reserve grade footy at GFL level what sort of money would I get for playing a, for umpiring a game well you get you get around about $100 a game and um, in the seniors uh, you get $150 a game and the classic was uh, Will Tate round one so he, he's got a job at the Truffle Duck uh, which he starts around about 5 o'clock um, and he was umpiring about uh, whether or not he goes to the Truffle Duck for uh, $13, $14 an hour or whether he umpires uh, for four hours on that Sunday, and gets his gets one hundred and fifty dollars uh, match fee, and he's quickly worked <coughs> out. And what he's done, he, it's great because the, the the word of mouth, his mother then went and told one of the other mothers uh, from school, and we've we've picked up uh, two more uh, two more umpires out of that uh, conversation uh, between his mother. So um, the the great thing though is is you learn to make decisions, you learn to um, you learn to self-manage, you learn self-awareness on the field, um, you learn that um, you need to be strong with people. Uh, so so there's, there's some fantastic lessons that uh, young people can learn. Uh, they can carry them through future life. Um, and, and keep fit. That's the other. That's the other bonus too. That's a. I mean, that's a great thing for when you're our age, Rob. That um, you get out, and you're still running around. And I, I'm not. I mean, for 20 years, I reckon I'm probably paid for a family holiday. And our girls have been to Queensland with the uh, the, the theme parks, etc. On on umpiring money for. I don't know, about 14 years in a row, I reckon. Uh, Steve, just quickly, you had a good story uh, telling me off air about being able to combine playing the game and umpiring the game, and I know a lot do that, but uh, a really good uh, feel-good story. Yeah, Theresia Meissner, uh, number 38 for the VFL Women's Cats. Uh, she's um, a girl born in Hamburg who found 
uh, AFL Women's in Germany started playing. Um, feedback to her was, hey, you're pretty good at this, Theresia. She always wanted to travel to Australia. She's, came, she's come out here, uh, played for the Bulldogs, found her way down to Geelong, plays in the Geelong back line. Um, started umpiring this year, and uh, she debuted uh, Geelong West Giants and Corio um, last week. So uh, Can play too, just incidentally. We, we saw a few of the uh, VFLW games. She can play. Yeah, she can. Yeah, she, she's a very good player. And, and um, there's an interview with her on uh, AFL Barwon's website, and it's quite insightful. It's a really interesting read. So, um, But she's a great girl, very fit, and... Um, very high football IQ for, uh, for 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 someone who's not a native Australian. So uh, she's a terrific story. She has a big future in umpiring. Um, I know the AFL, she, the AFL are aware of her and she's on their radar. It'd be interesting to see. Um, I'm a big believer you play footy while you can. Um, you play until you can't play anymore most of the time. But if footy's not for you, I mean, umpiring's a fantastic alternative and and, Robert, the, the, the thing is um, a lot of kids drop off from under 15, 17s and 19s. The amount of teams we see at under 19 level compared to under 15 level uh, drops off uh, quite considerably. Yep. We would love to be able to send those kids an email or get on the phone and invite, invite them down to umpiring. And, um, and if you're listening this morning, AFL Barwon website, follow the leads to the umpires or Geelong Football Umpires League, the GFUL. Get onto those websites, get onto contact and go down and have yourself some fun, earn some money, develop your character and uh, get amongst a bunch of people that are just, despite the fact they've got odd characters, they're good fun to be around umpires, I think. They, they can be, yeah. <laughs> odd, odd characters, you're, you're right too, but any club's got odd characters. No, you most certainly have. Steve, thanks for your time. We look forward to catching up with uh, you again later in the year. And again, congratulations on your own efforts that uh, is working hard to make other kids better umpires. Good on you. Well, thanks, Rob. Yeah, yeah, we'll take the accolades while we can. Good on you, mate. All the very best.